Hi, my name is Emily Ellingson and I am the Curator and Native Plants Collection Manager at the Arboretum State Botanical Garden of Kentucky. I manage the Walk Across Kentucky, which is 80 acres of native plants that represent the seven physiographic regions of Kentucky. So this is like a living tree museum. We have plants that were wild collected from across the state, they're grown on site, and then they are put into the landscape at the Arboretum. We are in the Appalachian Plateau region of eastern Kentucky, also known as the Eastern Coal Fields. Ecologically, the Appalachian Plateau is full of highlands and mountainous areas with hills, coves, and ravines, and has unique and highly diverse temperate forests. It is also where the mixed mesophytic forest is, and this occurs in deep and enriched soils with sheltered topography. This area was also an unglaciated refugium for many species. So the tree that I am standing in front of is the big leaf magnolia, Magnolia macrophylla, and it occurs in coves and ravines in mixed mesophytic forests in the Appalachian Plateau. It has the largest leaves and flowers of any North American native tree species. The leaves can be between 20 and 30 inches long and the flowers can be up to a foot in diameter. It also has really interesting cones which are um, really just the, the seeds, an aggregate of seeds that are red, and coarse branching. So the branches, um, the, the main stem doesn't have very many branches coming off of it. And that can mean that um, it's very beautiful, but it also has, uh, is prone to ice and storm damage. So we are now in the Cumberland Mountains region in, of southeastern Kentucky and it is similar in topography and flora to the Appalachian Plateau region, but has some of the highest elevations in the state, like Pine Mountain and Black Mountain. Because of these high elevations, there are species found here that are usually found in more northern latitudes, but are of now of, li of limited distribution in Kentucky. In the Arboretum, there are mounds, constructed mounds, that mimic these mountainous regions of the Cumberland Mountains. Another tree found in mixed mesophytic forests in eastern Kentucky is the eastern hemlock, or Tsuga canadensis. Eastern hemlock is a slow-growing and long-lived conifer in the pine family, and it's a foundation species. So that means that it alters the environment that it lives in in really important ecological ways. It is a graceful tree. It has pendulous branches, very small needles, and very small cones, and the top of it sort of nods, um, or curves. It's found in moist, protected areas and is currently under threat from an invasive insect called the hemlock woolly adelgid. Hemlock woolly adelgid are small insects that attach to the bark of the base of the needles and suck sugars from the tree. They deprive the tree of really essential nutrients, which results in needle loss and prevents new productive growth. They weaken trees, making them more susceptible to other problems, and heavy infestations can kill trees in four to ten years. Scientists and land managers are attempting to control hemlock woolly adelgid in Kentucky via chemical methods such as pesticides and biological methods such as predatory beetles. The Knobs region is a transitional zone between the bluegrass region, the Penny Rile, and the Appalachian Plateau. It has rugged to rolling hills, escarpments, and conical hills, also known as knobs. A tree found along woodland margins in the knobs region is sassafras. Sassafras is a medium-sized clonal tree, which means that there are root sprouts that form a colony. Really interesting uh, ID characteristic with that sassafras is it has three different shapes of leaves. It has an oval leaf, a leaf that sh is shaped kind of like a mitten, and then a leaf that has three lobes. They are dioecious, which means that there are separate male and female trees and you need both to reproduce. The oil produced by the roots of sassafras was once used to flavor root beer and make teas and has a very pleasant aroma. However, a compound in the root oils has been found to be possibly carcinogenic and is no longer used commercially. Sassafras is at risk across its range from a fungal disease called laurel wilt. The Penny Rao region is the largest physiographic region and is found in south central Kentucky. It has a variety of ecosystems such as barrens, prairies, glades, upland and lowland forests and has karst topography which creates underground sinkholes and cave systems. Another common tree in the Penny Rile is the black walnut, Juglans nigra. So black walnut has dark deeply fissured bark, compound leaves which are pretty late to leaf out in the spring 
and a, an edible fruit that's enclosed in a yellow-green husk. It also has what is called black walnut toxicity. So it creates this compound called juggalone, which is made in various different parts of the plant, but especially in the root system. And it actually inhibits the growth of different plant species around it. The black walnut wood is also highly prized in the timber industry for its strength, durability, and rich grain. We are in the Shawnee Hills region, also known as the Western Coal Fields, which is in far western Kentucky. This region contains rolling hills, floodplains, bottomlands, and lowest deposits. We are currently in the Arboretum's representation of the floodplain forest, which contains many water-loving species. One of these water-loving species is called the willow oak, Quercus phalos. This oak tree grows in lowland areas along streams and swamps. You can also often see it as a street tree because it is fairly adaptable to a, a wide range of soils and it's tolerant of pollution. There are two major classification groups of oak trees, the red oak group and the white oak group. The willow oak belongs in the red oak group. One way you can tell this is by the small bristle that sticks out at the very tip of the leaf, which is a characteristic of all oaks in the red oak group. This is also a good way to identify that this tree is actually an oak, because the leaf of a willow oak does not look like a typical oak leaf. There are no lobes, and it is long and what botanists call linear, like the leaves of many willow trees. In Kentucky, the Mississippi Embayment, also known as the Jackson Purchase, has some of the lowest elevations in the state. It is pretty flat and contains a lot of floodplains and swamps. It also contains some woody plants that do not grow elsewhere in the state, like water tupelo and water hickory. We are in the Arboretum's Mississippi Embayment Wetland, and I am standing in front of the bald cypress, uh, Taxodium disticum. This tree uh, lives in wetland areas, floodplains, and swamps, often in areas where there is prolonged flooding. But it can also survive in street tree conditions, so it does tolerate drier soils. What is really interesting about this tree is that it is a deciduous conifer. So it loses its leaves or its needles in the fall like other deciduous trees, but it's actually in the same family as evergreen species such as juniper. Bald cypress has a buttressed trunk and distinctive knobby root growths that we call knees that stick up above the water. In Kentucky, the bluegrass region is known for rolling hills and fertile phosphatic limestone soils. The pre-settlement landscape looked like woodland uh, savannas, cane breaks, calcareous mesophytic forests, and the Kentucky River, River Palisades. Kentucky yellowwood, Clodrastis kentuckia, is a rare tree in North America and of limited distribution in Kentucky. It is found in rich, well-drained limestone soils, often on valley, in valleys or on ridgetops, especially like those in the Kentucky River Palisades. It is in the pea family, so like other legumes, it fixes nitrogen from the air and converts it into a form that other organisms can use. It has beautiful, white, fragrant flowers that come out in the springtime, compound leaves, and smooth gray bark. The inner bark, the heartwood, is a very bright yellow color, hence the name yellowwood. There are over 1,600 trees and shrubs in the Arboretum. We hope you've enjoyed learning about a few of our Kentucky native trees, and we hope to see you at the Arboretum when we are open.